welcome to you all this morning. I'm the Reverend Phaedra Pamphilon Green and I'm the rector here at St Mary's in Bletchingley and St Peter and St Paul in Nutfield. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forevermore. Amen. Today is Trinity Sunday and this Sunday is the day that gives us the whole picture of God's nature and love for us. Now Reverend Penny will be talking to us a bit later but I hope the whole service will help you understand this very special Sunday. But let's begin by saying our opening prayer together. We have come together as the family of God in our Father's presence to offer him praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive his holy word, to bring before him the needs of the world, to ask his forgiveness of our sins, and to seek his grace, that through his Son, Jesus Christ, we may give ourselves to his service. Amen. Let us offer our Father praise and thanksgiving for his love and generosity to us as we join our choir in singing, Holy, Holy, Holy. God and bring to him 
our sorrow and pain at failing him and failing one another. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Lord, have mercy. Woe is me, for I am lost. I am a person of unclean lips. Christ, have mercy. Your guilt is taken away and your sin is forgiven. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Holy God, faithful and unchanging, enlarge our minds with the knowledge of your truth and draw us more deeply into the mystery of your love that we may truly worship you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Pamela will now read from the letter to the Roman Church. The reading is taken from Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 8, beginning at verse 12. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very Spirit bearing witness of our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if in fact we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Pamela. So let's sing. There is a Redeemer.
Pamela will read from John's Gospel for us. The Gospel reading is taken from John chapter 3, beginning at verse 1. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the spirit. Nicodemus said to him, how can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. This is the Gospel of Christ. Thank you, Pamela. Penny will now bring us her thoughts for this Trinity Sunday. Today is Trinity Sunday, and when we profess the Trinity in our creed, we affirm the essence of God. The essence of God is to be in relationship. The doctrine of Trinity shows us the inner life of God. God the Father is with the Son, who is with the Spirit, who is with the Father. Self-giving and self-receiving. And we also acknowledge the fact that the nature of God is always, always to take the initiative to reveal himself to us. God seeks to woo us into that to participate in that Trinitarian relationship with him for the salvation and the healing of the world. And Nicodemus, a leader of the Jew, comes to Jesus at night. For he had definitely seen something of the presence of God in Jesus, but he couldn't quite integrate it into what he already knew. So Nicodemus goes to Jesus with his questions. And a problem arises because Jesus is speaking symbolic language when he says, no one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born from above. And Nicodemus is looking at plain literal meanings and misquotes Jesus by saying, how can anyone be born after having grown old? Rebirth in the spiritual life comes from God and the spirit which blows where it chooses and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. We are not in control of the movement of the spirit. We can only say yes to her work. Nicodemus begins by telling Jesus what he knows and the Greek word that is used here for knowing suggests that Nicodemus believed he had a complete knowledge rather than one that could grow or be challenged. 
Maybe he said this because he had fear of being excluded from the synagogue. Or maybe he felt that as a religious leader, he shouldn't have all the answers. And on our spiritual journey, we, like Nicodemus, sometimes feel lost with God, or we don't understand him, or we can't integrate into our life, our present experience and what is happening around us. I felt a bit lost with God before we went to battle last week. I didn't doubt God, but I was tired. But on the Tuesday evening, we had a girlfriend who I'd trained for the priesthood with and her husband come to supper. And I felt I was able to share with her how I was feeling. And on reflection, I now realise that it wasn't until I was sharing with her did I have words for how I was feeling. And her words to me, well, you know you can take all this to God, was now possible because I knew in part what all this was. And in that knowing and in that trusting, as we prayed morning prayer the next day, the words of Psalm 142 entered my soul in a different way. The psalmist says, why are you so downcast, O my soul, and why are you so disquieted within me? Hope in God. I shall again praise him, my help and my God. So there will be times when all of our ways of knowing God and relating to God seem dry or we may, everything may feel dark. And we may question him or argue with Jesus, as did Nicodemus. And we, or we may shout or weep or rage. We need to lament as the psalmist did, but let us do so with respect for to whom we are speaking. Maybe we need to do it on bended knees. For in times of growth in our relationship with God, we have to let go of our old ways of understanding God, for they will always be limited. Our old ways of trying to control life. These are ways of the flesh. Let us pause, breathe, reflect and let the Spirit speak to our heart for all our own efforts to change how we think and feel blinds us to the fullness of grace that is present in the whole of life. Yes, even in the deepest suffering, for the basis of life is benevolent. For God made the world out of love, for love, and Jesus has redeemed it. God is not condemnatory but always redemptive. The purpose of God is to draw us into his bigger story, which is beyond our wild imaginings, and where we will find his grace patiently waiting for us to be seen and for us to give thanks for. And this transformation will happen regularly throughout our lives, for we are called to grow in Christ until the final letting go when we die. We have to be born from above continually on our spiritual walk. We know that Nicodemus appears later in this gospel, both as a defender of Jesus and after Jesus' death, joins with Joseph of Arimathea to bury him. So Nicodemus, despite his reaction to Jesus on that particular night, that spark that drew him to Jesus bursts into life. Here's the story of all disciples. And finally, I will finish with a reflection from a Carmelite nun. Outside the city in a marsh near the river grew a reed. She had lived in the green and yellow marsh all of her life and she was happy. When it rained, the young reed gave thank for God and felt clean on the inside and on the outside. Within her life surged and she grew strong. When the sun beat on the marsh, she thanked God, but not as loudly as before. She, know, she knew that, though it scorched her outside and hurt her inside, her roots were digging into rich, dark soil. But most of her days were like yours and mine, sunny, overcast, windy and drizzly. One day, and I'm not sure of the date, the Son of God walked through the marsh. He liked to sit out there at times away from the whirlpool of the city. He saw a speckled reed and stopped to look at her. It wasn't that she was particularly beautiful, but the Son of God needed a reed to pipe on, and with a little fixing up, she would do. He studies the reed and finally said, Little reed, I need to pipe to play a melody. Would you let me pluck you by the roots? 
I can fix you for my purposes, and that may hurt, but I wish to sing a song of love through you. The little reed could hardly believe her ears. She could hardly believe what was happening to her or what the Son of God was saying to her. Finally, she strangely enough said with no hesitation, Yes, yes, let it be done. And as the Son of God pulled up the reed by the roots, and it did hurt, she lay in his hand and didn't mind. Even when he took his knife and cut away her throbbing roots, she just cried, yes, yes, let it be done. The Son of God whittled her to fit in his palm and emptied the clutter of her heart. And when she was hollow, virgin, empty, the Son of God kissed her with his lips and uttered through her a beautiful song of love. Amen. So let us affirm our faith in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. We're going to have a time of prayer now. We come boldly to the throne of grace, praying to the Almighty God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, for mercy and for grace. We plead before your throne in heaven, Father of heaven, whose love profound a ransom for our souls was found. We pray for the world, created by your love, for its nations and governments. We especially pray for the Holy Land at this time, for all people, regardless of faith, race, gender or sexuality. We lift them to you and pray for peace to flow like mighty rivers in and out of that holy place. Extend to them your peace, your pardoning love, your mercy and your grace. We plead before your throne in heaven, Almighty Son, Incarnate Word, our Prophet, Priest, Redeemer, Lord. We pray for the Church, created for your glory, for its ministry to reflect those works of yours, that we may shine your light and love wherever we go, that we may never be afraid of the Gospel, and that we may share your good news. Extend to us your salvation, growth, mercy and grace. We plead before your throne in heaven, eternal spirit by whose breath the soul is raised from sin and death. We pray for families and individuals created in your image, for the lonely, the bereaved, the sick and the dying. In a moment of silence, we bring before God those who we know who need your care and comfort. Breathe on them the breath of life and bring them to your mercy and grace. We plead before your throne in heaven, thrice holy, Father, Spirit, Son, mysterious Godhead, three in one. We pray for ourselves, for your church, for all whom we remember before you today. Bring us all to bow before your throne in heaven, to receive life and pardon, mercy and grace for all eternity, as we worship you, saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord. God of power and might, 
Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Amen. Peace to you from God our Heavenly Father. Peace from his Son Jesus Christ who is our peace. Peace from the Holy Spirit, the life giver. The peace of the triune God be always with you. So wherever we are, let us send God's peace to the world around us and beyond. Now, we may not be able to come to church and take communion with others, but we can come to God and share our spiritual communion with him through the words of this prayer. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, for all the benefits you have given me, for all the pains and insults you have borne for me. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart. O most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, may I know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly day by day. Amen. And so let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. As we stay in this state of prayer, we will come before the Trinity, invoking the Trinity for protection, invoking the Trinity for his love through St. Patrick's breastplate. I arise today through a mighty strength, the invocation of the Trinity, through the belief in the threeness through the confession of the oneness of the creator of creation. Through the strength of his resurrection with his ascension, through the strength of his descent for the judgment day. I arise today through the strength of the love of cherubim in obedience of angels in the service of archangels in hope of resurrection to meet with reward in prayers of patriarchs, in predictions of prophets, in preaching of apostles, in faith of confessors, in innocence of holy virgins, in deeds of righteous men. I arise today through the strength of heaven the light of the sun, the radiance of the moon, the splendour of fire, the speed of lightning, the swiftness of wind, the depth of the sea, the stability of earth, the firmness of rock. I arise today through God's strength to pilot me, God's might to uphold me, God's wisdom to guide me, God's eye to look before me, God's ear to hear me, God's word to speak for me, God's hand to guard me, God's shield to protect me, God's host to save me from snares of devils, from temptation of vices, from everyone who shall wish me ill, afar and anear. I summon today all these powers 
between me and those evils, against every cruel and merciless power that may oppose my body and my soul. Christ to shield me today, so that there may come to me an abundance of reward. Christ with me, Christ before me, Christ behind me, Christ in me, Christ beneath me, Christ above me, Christ on my right, Christ on my left, Christ when I lie down, Christ when I sit down, Christ when I arise, Christ in the heart of everyone who thinks of me, Christ in the mouth of everyone who speaks of me, Christ in every eye that sees me, Christ in every ear that hears me. I arise today through the strength of heaven. So I do pray that you all have a really good week. Thank you for joining us today on this Trinity Sunday. May God keep you in all your days. May Christ shield you in all your ways. May the Spirit bring you healing and peace. And may God, the Holy Trinity, drive all darkness from you and pour upon you blessing and light. Amen. Amen.